Grenade by Alan Gratz, Part 1, pages 130 through 134. Ray. Run. The Japanese were coming. Me and Barbecue will take the first wave, Big John yelled. New guy, Zimmer, you're the second team. You fire while the first team reloads, got it? Don't shoot till you see the whites of the rise. Ray took aim through the sights of his rifle. At first, he was just looking at green mountains and blue sky. And then suddenly, there was a dirty green helmet. And then the face of a Japanese soldier, his eyes wide with surprise at seeing Ray and his rifle team. Ray raised himself up on his elbows and fired his M1. Pacow! The soldier fell backward down the slope. There was no time to think, no time to do anything but shoot again and again, as Japanese soldier after Japanese soldier tried to get high enough on the ridge to shoot them back. I'm almost out! Ray yelled. Click. His clip was spent, but there was already another soldier in his sights. Pacow! Ray flinched as Zimmer took him down. Reload! Reload! Big John yelled at him. Ray ejected his rifle, spent clip, and scrambled for a new one from the pouches of his belt. He had another loaded and ready to go, just in time for him and Big John to take over for Zimmer and the new guy when they ran out. The Japanese kept coming, and Ray kept shooting. He had to. Pacow! 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 How long had they been at this? It felt like hours, but Ray knew it had to be only minutes. His arms and shoulders ached. I'm running low on ammo, the new guy yelled. Ray was low, too. They all had to be. They didn't have an unlimited supply of bullets and grenades. And then, as quickly as it had begun, it was over. The Japanese soldier stopped coming, and Ray breathed a huge sigh of relief and checked his watch. The whole counterattack had lasted no more than 15 minutes. Hey, you guys still alive? Big John asked. Just barely, Simmer called back. The new guy was alive, too. Everything was still and quiet. The American mortars weren't firing because they didn't want to hit any Marines left alive on the ridge. And for some reason, the Japanese mortars hadn't started up again. The silence was almost more frightening than the attack. Ray knew some Japanese soldier was out there right now with his rifle trained on the very place he was hiding, just waiting for Ray to peek out. Now what do we do? Ray asked. Hang on, somebody's coming, Big John told them. Another ground attack? Ray checked his ammunition. He only had two clips left. That was just 16 bullets. They weren't going to be able to hold out much longer. Same pair as before, Big John said, his voice hard. When we're out, we're out, and we make a run for it. The top of a head rose on the Japanese side of the saddle, and Ray took careful aim with his rifle. His finger tightened on the trigger as he waited for the soldier's eyes. But it wasn't a soldier. It was an Okinawan woman. And there are more of them. Women, children, old men, refugees. Dozens of them coming up the hill toward the saddle between the ridges. But why here? Why now? The woman closest to Ray had on the most beautiful blue dress Ray had ever seen. It was covered with white flowers. White like fluffy clouds on a sunny summer day in Nebraska. Ray froze, the woman floating in front of him like some kind of vision. Who was she? What was she doing here, in the middle of a firefight? How in the world had she kept that blue dress so clean when everything else was covered in mud? The woman was sobbing, Ray noticed, and she held a baby in her arms. With sudden horror, Ray understood why these people were here, now, in the middle of a battlefield. The woman had dynamite strapped around her waist. The Japanese were using the Okinawans as human bombs. Shoot! Shoot them before they get too close! Big John roared. Zimmer and the new guy fired, their fear overcoming their discipline. But Ray was frozen. He couldn't do it. The woman in the beautiful blue dress staggered closer, closer, her arms wrapped tight around her baby, protecting him from the monsters in their world. Barbecue! Barbecue! Big John yelled, trying to snap him out of it. But Ray could already feel his rifle lowering. He couldn't shoot this woman. Wouldn't. So Big John did it for him. Kaboom! Ray's skin glowed hot from the blast. He felt fuzzy-headed, dazed, like he did when he had the flu. He tried to shake it off to come back to his senses. My rifle's overheating! Zimmer cried. 
It was too hot for him to hold. Ray! Ray, we need your help, man! Big John called. Come on, Majors! Zimmer yelled. As soon as Zimmer said it, time stopped. Big John froze mid-reload, his eyes wide. Ray's mind cleared like a fog lifting and his heart quit mid-beat. Zimmer had called him Majors on the battlefield. The moment broke like lightning. Japanese rifles and machine gun tracers mowed down the Okinawans from behind and pelted the ridgeline. The Japanese poured everything they had at the saddle between the hills. And then the grenade landed right between Ray's legs. Run! Run! Get out of here! Big John roared. Ray launched himself from the saddle. He dove behind a tree stump as the grenade exploded behind him, and he tumbled head over heels down the hill. He landed with a crunching thud, his ears ringing from the nearness of the blast, his helmet gone. He didn't know if Big John or Zimmer or the new guy were still alive, and he didn't turn around to find out. Ray staggered to his feet and ran. Ran straight and low and fast, just like Sergeant Meredith had taught him. He didn't know where he was or where he was going. He just knew he never wanted to see another Japanese soldier again as long as he lived.